I'll start by enabling Mesh Morpher Optimizer. First, I'll select the Wall Boundary condition and define the domain that will be morphed. Next, I'll specify the size of the region. The region must be slightly bigger than the geometry that I want to change in order to keep proper connectivity between deforming and non-deforming regions. I'll enter 0.012 meters for direction 2, the height, and I'll change the number of control points in each direction to 3, 2, and 2, and click Create. The bounding box appears in the graphics window indicated by the cyan-colored balls. The mesh will change following the deformation of the region. Now I need to define constraints for my region. I want to set inlet, outlet, and symmetry as fixed constraints. The wall is unconstrained and is free to move. Now I'll specify the deformation. I want to use two control parameters to deform my domain. The first parameter will control the vertical movement of my control points, and the second parameter will control the horizontal movement. I'll click the P icon, then click New Parameter, and create a parameter and call it vertical. I'll create one more parameter called horizontal. I'll assign vertical to the first parameter, apply, and horizontal to the second. And I click apply to save the changes. Now I can define the movement of these control points indicated by the cyan colored balls using the motion settings. I'll click mouse probe to enable the selection of the points in the graphics window. Using the mouse probe button, I'll select these control points. I want their movement in the Z direction to be controlled by parameter 2, horizontal. I'll set the scaling factor of the movement to 1 in the Z direction. Apply. I'll deselect everything. I want this control point to also use the value of parameter 1, which is the vertical displacement, and I want it to control movement in the positive Y direction. Apply. I also want the movement of this control point to be controlled by the same parameter 1 in the negative Y direction. Apply. Rather than doing this manually, you can read the previously generated file by using the Read option. I'll close the Working and Motion Settings dialog boxes. The next step is to go to the Optimizer tab and set Optimizer to Workbench as the control mechanism for the parameters. I'll apply all the changes. I'll print a summary to check that my settings for the control points are correct. Everything seems fine. The Mesh Morpher Optimizer is set. Lastly, I want to create an output parameter for the pressure drop in my system. I'll click Parameter System, and in the Parameters dialog box, from Create, I'll select Surface Integrals. I'll use the Area Weighted Average Pressure at the Inlet. Because the default static pressure at the outlet is 0 Pascal, an inlet pressure will give me the pressure drop. I'll click Save Output Parameter and enter P-Drop as the name. I'll close Fluent and return to my project schematic. Now my simulation is set and ready for the solution stage of my analysis. The parameter Set bar appears in the project schematic. Let's take a look at the parameters defined for the simulation. I'll double click the parameter set bar to go to the parameter set tab. Here I can see the list of the input parameters and the list of the output parameters I specified in Fluent. I'll return to the project tab and initialize my simulation using the interpolation file I generated earlier from my original data. By doing this, I can save time because an interpolation file provides a much better initial guess, even for a morphed mesh. I'll click the solution cell to display its properties. In the Properties view, for the initialization method, I'll select the third option, Use Solution Data from File. The Initial Data File cell appears below Initialization Method. Next, I'll copy the path of my interpolation file. Click Browse File next to Initial Data File, paste the path into the address bar, and open the containing folder. I'll select the interpolation file and click Open. I'll update the solution cell. Once my problem is solved, the state of the solution cell becomes up to date. My simulation is complete. In Part 3, 
I'll continue with finding the optimal solution for my problem using design points.